now we're ready for random variables. Random variables. Random variables are where the rubber meets the road in probability. So far we've been just looking at sort of abstract sets and their probabilities. But random variables are where we begin to uh, use model, uh, real, the sort of real things that we're interested in with some sort of uh, random, as some sort of random quantity. So intuitively, what is a random variable? Well, it's sort of just this, think of it as a random quantity such as if I had a quarter, some coin, and I flipped it five times, so I get these five results, and I count the number of heads that I get. We could model this as a random variable. Or another example would be, say if I had a light bulb, and I wanted to model the length of time before the light bulb dies. So I could model this as a, as a random variable also. So that's just sort of intuition. So what's the definition? So if we have some probability measure space, omega, uh, some set omega, sigma algebra A, and probability measure P, a random variable is a function which we denote usually by capital X from omega to the real numbers such that the set of all elements little omega in our set omega with the property that X of omega is less or equal to a number little x belongs to this sigma algebra, our sigma algebra. And that holds for every number little x in the real numbers. So that is the definition of a random variable. So just think about that for a second maybe. Now let me make a couple of remarks here. First of all, uh, this condition here is uh, what we refer to as a measurable, we call x a measurable function when it satisfies this condition. And this is sort of a technical condition. It, it's uh, because usually it, t it will turn out that most of the time naturally occurring random variables will satisfy this. So the main thing to, to remember about the definition is that it's some function from omega to the real numbers. Another remark is a bit of notation. So we usually use capital letters for random variables like x or y for random variables, and we use lowercase little x and little y for corresponding values that the random variables take. So in this case I used capital X for the random variable and little x for a value. This is a, just a convention. And so another notational remark, so that may be my first notational remark, Second notational remark is uh, we abbreviate, let me go back up so you can see this. So we usually abbreviate sets like this. So we might abbreviate that set as capital X less or equal to X to mean this, this same thing here. Or more generally, I might write some condition, something about x, random variable, to mean just the set of omegas for which 
that same condition is satisfied by x of omega. So this is a little, just a little compact shorthand for the same thing. And a further shorthand, which is very often used and sometimes can be quite confusing if you're new to probability, is the following. So we write p of, so in this case, for example, we would write p of x, the random variable less than little x, to mean the probability of the set, this set here probability of the set of little omegas for which this random variable is less or equal to little x. Or more generally, you know, I could write p of, just like in the previous case, I could write p of some condition to mean the probability of the set of omegas for which that condition holds. Now, we're ready for the next definition, which is the CDF of a random variable. So the CDF, cumulative distribution function, of a random variable, which we often abbreviate by RV, is the function capital F, we usually write capital F, from the reals to the interval from 0 to 1, such that f of x equals the probability that the random variable x is less or equal to the value little x. So that's the CDF. Now, something about this should sort of bother you perhaps, because you will remember that we actually already have a definition of a CDF, and uh, you know I've just claimed that this, this function here, this f, is a CDF. But in fact, it turns out that that's true. It is. This definition of a function of f is actually a CDF according to our previous definition. If you recall, our previous definition was that a CDF uh, was uh, non-decreasing. It was uh, it satisfied the property that the limit it was it was right continuous, right? And it satisfied the property that as little x went to infinity, then it went to one, and as little x went to minus infinity, it went to zero. So that's a little an exercise, a good exercise actually involves some analysis and a little bit of a touch of analysis and uh, good good practice for uh, honing your skills of working with measures. So exercise is that f is actually a CDF according to our previous definition. So now we have yet another definition involving random variables, the distribution of a random variable x is the probability measure which we denote by p to the capital X, sometimes this, this may not be a standard notation but sometimes we write it this way, on the real numbers with a Borel sigma algebra such that, so it's defined by the following property. The probability of a set A equals the probability that X is in A according to our original probability measure P on omega. So remember we had this, we were uh, assuming some underlying probability measure space with some probability measure P, and now we've defined a new probability measure on R by this property. So it's just a coincidence sort of uh, that I used P here, or you could think of it as, as P sort of uh, pushed forward through X. Oh, and this holds for any 
set A in the Borel sigma algebra on the real numbers. And I pulled a fast one again. I've said this, this thing is actually, does define a probability measure. And, uh, and one has to check that that's true. And you can do that. That's actually not too hard to do. So I'll just say that you could take that as another exercise. So exercise P of X, or P to the X, is a probability measure, a Borel probability measure on R. And so now, let me tie these two things together. You may think that there is some sort of curious connection between these two concepts, and you would be correct. There is, and we will make it precise by the following claim. Px, the distribution of x, is the probability measure induced by the CDF F. That's the CDF of X. Now you will remember, perhaps you'll remember, that the CDF from our earlier section on CDFs, uh, a CDF, there's a unique uh, probability measure corresponding to a CDF. So there's, the, there's this one-to-one -one correspondence between uh, CDF and a Borel probability measure on the real numbers. And my claim here is that this, the probability measure which we have defined in this way, coincides with the probability measure that uh, corresponds to this CDF. And I will very briefly, very quickly outline why that's the case. So if I denote by Q the probability measure, corresponding to that uh, CDF F, then Q is defined by the property that it's the measure of these sets, the interval from minus infinity to X, equals F of X. So remember that was just the correspondence that we had set up. And what is F of X? Well F of X is just by definition the probability that random variable X is less or equal to little x and we can rewrite this as P probability that X falls in the interval from minus infinity to little x. And what's that? Well that is just exactly the probability by definition of PX probability of that set under PX. And therefore because there was a unique correspondence between, there was a unique probability measure, Borel probability measure on the line, Q corresponding to F, satisfying this property, and PX satisfies the property also, then that implies that Q equals PX. And that proves the claim.